Hello, in this video we're going to prove the home bond for owning method for multiple comparisons. Now we're going to prove it two different ways. Um, but first, let me illustrate how the method works. And here we have in hypotheses and with p-values associated with each hypothesis. hypothesis. And then uh, what we do is we take these p-values and we order them from smallest to largest. And then we keep the hypothesis associated with the, the p-values the same. And we want an overall significance level of alpha. Okay. So what we do is we order the p-value. So it's the smallest, this the largest. Okay. Generically, we call it pi. And then here, we, we uh, for the smallest, we compare it against alpha over n. And the second, we compare the p-value with alpha over n minus 1 all the way to the largest p-value we compare with alpha. And this is generically how you set this the uh, alpha level up, or the significance level. So now, the procedure says if, if p-value, this p-value is smaller than that, reject H1, the, the hypothesis associated with that, and move on. If this p-value is smaller than that, reject the hypothesis associated with this p-value. And you and then you keep going until you can't. So let's, let's for instance, let's say this p-value is not smaller than this significance level. So we do not reject this hypothesis and we stop. Everything past this way is not rejected and these two are rejected. Okay, so generically, You'll see, um, you'll see it stated like this. Let k be the smallest i such that um, the p value is not greater than the, the significance level that we picked here. So um, once we know that, then you reject all the hypothesis smaller than that k, and you do not reject hk and larger though those hypotheses and and you're done and this multiple testing procedure controls for the family wise error rate to be less than or equal to alpha so now let's jump right in on the proofs so here we have our n hypotheses and the p values associated with these hypotheses um, so yeah, so these are null hypotheses. Maybe I should emphasize that. And so we order the p-values, and we have, and we, and we drag along the hypotheses that's associated with each of these p-values. So that's the smallest, then this, and etc. So in order for us to commit a type one error, there have to be some true null hypotheses that we reject. Okay. So let's assume there are n zero of these hypotheses to be true. Okay. Now n zero is uh, less than or equal to n. Okay. Could be zero. Could be one. Could be n. Now we define an index set, and so this index takes on the values one through n, and it's only in here if h i is true. So the number of elements in this are n0. So this set may contain 1, 3, 7, 8, 9, and n. You know, So it, it's a subset of 1 through n. And it's only for the, tr the true hypotheses. So now, let's assume that we reject at least one of the n hy n0 hypotheses. That means we've committed a type 1 error. You know, if it's true, we don't, if the null hypothesis is true, we don't want to reject it, okay? So let's let K be the first rejected true hypothesis. Now, K plus 1, K plus 2, etc. could be true hypotheses that are also rejected. We're just letting K be the first one, and it could be the only one. So that says the first K minus one null hypotheses were correctly rejected, okay? Because K is the first 
true hypothesis being rejected. These were all correctly rejected. So HK is wrongly rejected. And then note, and then this becomes critical to understand. Okay, So if we have n total hypotheses, and we subtract out the hypotheses that we've already correctly rejected, what's left over has to be greater than or equal to n0. So if only true hypotheses are left after k minus 1, then those are equal. But if one of those is also a false null reject, then this number is bigger. And so you kind of have to get, just get that set in your mind. Pause the uh, video if you need to. So then if we take the reciprocal of these, that means 1 over n0 is greater than 1 over n plus 1 minus k. And I just distributed the negative. And I wrote it like this because that is associated with the, these levels here. Now, um, so by definition, pk, which is the p-value of the kth hypothesis, remember we just rejected it, so it's less than alpha over n plus 1 minus k, but then we just showed that this is less than alpha over n0. Okay, so now we'll take that and there's three more steps in this little proof here. We're going to set up a set. So this set contains the all, you know, all sets that have HI being rejected and it being the first rejected true hypothesis. Okay, so this set contains the, the ones that have HI only being, re being the only rejected true hypothesis. So that's a type 1 error. And it has, if, if HI is rejected and there were one or more additional no hypothesis are rejected, I mean, those are all in this set. Okay, so that's for a specific I. And we just showed that the probability that we reject HI, you know, assuming it's the first true hypothesis, is less than or equal to alpha over N. Now this is one scenario. So let's, let's look at this piece here. We're going to take this I and we're going to union, union it with, with all the I in this index set. So here, that th this is the set of all possible at least one at least one type one errors. So that and so and the probability of at least one type one error is is we call that the family wise error rate. Okay, and then using Boole's inequality, which we're not going to prove here, just because I don't want the video to to get too long. That's less than or equal to the sum over this index, same index, of the probability of AI. Well, we just said the probability of any AI, because it's the first one of the true hypothesis being rejected, is less than or alpha over N0. And remember, there's only N0 elements in I. So if we sum over each one of those, there's N0 times this. N0 is canceled and we get alpha. So the family-wise error rate is protected using the holmes Bonferroni method. Now for part two, which I think is pretty, pretty fascinating, that's why I'm going to cover it, there's two backgrounds here. What is closed-tested procedure and what is the Bonferroni correction? Um, there, I think we all know what the Bonferroni correction is, but I'll cover it anyway. Closed hypothesis testing. If we have n hypotheses and we want the family-wise error rate to be less than or equal to zero, then um, it says that we reject any one of these hypotheses if all possible interaction, interactions or intersections with hypotheses of HI can also be rejected at the alpha level. Okay, and so you do that for each one of those, and then that this controls the uh, alpha level. And to just to give a quick example, um, if we have three hypotheses, and 
Um, we reject H1 if we can reject each one of these while controlling the type 1 error rate, you know, to be less than or equal to alpha of each of these tests individually. Okay, so when it does, it's not very specific. You could use a multivariate test to test this. Remember, these are no hypothesis, too. So maybe the treatments are equal, other two treatments are equal, and other two treatments are equal. So are they all equal, or is at least one of them different? So you can use a multivariate test, or you could test them each and then maybe use a, a multiple uh, comparisons adjustment for those. But each one of these have to be controlled at the alpha level. Then we can say H1 is rejected at the alpha level. Okay, that's a closed testing procedure, and I'm going to make that another video proving that, but for now we're going to assume it's true. And the Bonferroni correction is... I think is classic and everybody should know what it means if we have n hypotheses and um, we're going to test each of these individually um, we know that n zero of these are true um, we're going to reject H naught when the p-value is less than alpha over n and this is the Bonfroni correction or adjustment there's n hypotheses we divide by n and then this is a quick little proof of the of that it does protect the family-wise air rate uh, probably at least one type one air and that means if the ith p value is less than uh, alpha over n we reject but we gotta if we union in that over all of the true hypotheses the true rejected hypotheses then this is the uh, all the possible ways to commit at least one type one air that's less than or equal to the sums by the uh, uh, Boole's inequality and there's n one of those and then this is less than that those cancel and it's alpha so the Bonfroni correction does adjust for uh, um, it does control the type 1 error rate now here's the second proof and it uses uh, the closed testing procedure and the Bonfroni correction and so if we have n Hypothesis. Remember, these are null hypotheses. So it could be the, the mean 1 is 0, mean 2 is 0, mean n is 0, or two treatments are equal. You know, and then the alternative is that it's not 0, or the treatments are different, or etc. Okay. So now let's focus on the H1. Uh, one. Remember, and this is in parentheses that says, so this hypothesis is associated with the smallest p-value, p1, you know, in parentheses. So we're going to use the Bonfroni correction of alpha over n, and we have n of these hypotheses, okay? So we're going to test all intersections that contain H1. And as generically, that's H1, H1 intersect H2, H1 intersect H3, da 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 da. It could be H intersect um, 1, 2, and 3, uh, 3, 4, 5, then all the way to the largest one where we have in hypo all in hypotheses. Okay, so but in so each one of these tests, and there's two to the n of those, we're going to use the Bonfroni correction. So if we test this, each one individually, adjusting using the Bonfroni correction, we control the type 1 error rate here. And here, we could technically use a Bonfroni correction of alpha over 2, because there's only 2. But if we use this, then we definitely are conservative, and it's you know we're protecting the, the type 1 error rate. So now, here's a couple notes. Remember that we're going to look at P1, the smallest p-value. And if it's less than alpha over n, then all of these sets are rejected. Okay? And so let's just look at the biggest one. And so remember this is, um, we're testing them individually. So are they all equal to zero or all the treatments equal? Or is at least one of them different? That's the hypothesis we're testing here. And if we... H1, the p-value associated with H1, is less than alpha over n, which is our Bonfroni correction, 
we reject this, which says, hey, at least one of them is not zero or the treatments aren't equal. So we reject this no hypothesis, this intersection no hypothesis. And that's true for each one of these. So if this is true, then we reject them all. And if the, P, the smallest p-value is greater than this, then not all of these are rejected. Specifically, this one is not rejected. We may not reject some more, but in the closed testing procedure, we have to reject all these. So if it's less than alpha over 10, all of those are rejected, and then we can reject H1 at the alpha level. And if it's greater, then we can't reject them all, so we, then we stop. But let's move on. So let's assume that H1 is rejected. So now let's focus on H2 only and the remaining N minus 1 hypothesis. Now we don't have to put this in the mix because we know that we just rejected it. There's only N minus 1 hypotheses left. So if there's only N minus 1 hypotheses, let's use the bond froni correction at alpha over N minus 1. And then we test all intersections that contain H2 and not H1 because it's not in the mix. We already know that it's we rejected it, controlling for the alpha level. Okay, so that means all the intersections are H2, H2 and 3, H2 and 4, H2, 3, 5, etc., all the way up to all N minus 1 hypotheses. And the same rationale can be uh, used here. If P2, which is the second smallest p value, is less than alpha over n minus 1, that means we're going to reject all of these intersection hypotheses, which says that we can reject H2 at the alpha level because each one of those are protected using the bond froni correction method. Okay, And this is also true. If P2, the second smallest p value, is greater than alpha over n minus 1, not all of these are rejected, and specifically this one's not. There may be more, but not all are rejected. Okay, Then if we reject H2, then we go to H3. And so we take out H1 and H2 because we know those are rejected, and then we focus on the remaining N minus 2 hypothesis. So we just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put uh, dot, 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 and we go to the last one. And if we get to step n, that means we've rejected the first n minus 1. Have all been rejected. So let's focus on the last one at the h sub n level. Okay? So there's only one there. So if we're going to test this at the alpha level, well, we just use alpha. So if the, the nth largest p value is less than alpha, then we reject. If it's not, then we don't. So each one, so the conclusion is, based on a closed testing procedure, the fan-wise error rate is less than or equal to alpha. So each one of those, uh, H1 was protected at the alpha level, H2, H3, all the way to Hn. And so this is uh, another proof using closed testing procedures, the, the uh, home Bonferroni correction method is true and controls the type 1 error rate. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.